Hey guys, how are we doing today? Right, so today's quick video is going to be on making a zero clearance insert for my table saw. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to measure it out. I'm going to draw it up on our CAD program and then cut it out on our laser machine just because we've got the tool, so we might as well use it. Um, but yeah, we've got a big job coming up in the next few days where I have to cut down a whole stack of 18mm and 15mm birch ply for some for a high-end cabinet and desk and I want to make sure that we don't get any tear out so we've got a new blade on order that's going to be here tomorrow we'll replace the zero clearance insert because that's getting worn and um and yeah we'll go from there cool all right okay so here we are at the saw this is the unit that comes with it obviously it sits in there Nice and flush with the edge of the table, but leaves a huge gap in here. Like I can fit my finger in it, which is fine because obviously you want to, you need something support in here when you're cutting like a 45. But um, it's no good for us for a zero clearance insert. So this is the one that I had before. You can see all my measurements on there that I've just taken, and um, it works fine. But we're, we're falling, starting to fall to bits now. We've got a uh, big old chip out on here. This is coming away. <clears throat> got a lot of wear on it, and. Uh, and yeah, just needs a new one. So what I did was I've taken, I've got my calipers, but you could just use, you could use a ruler if you wanted. I've measured to the center of the hole from the side, and then I've measured to the center of the hole up from the bottom. Obviously I've measured the length. So it's 105 by 368, I believe. Yeah, 368 by 107, sorry. and. I always try when I'm doing something like this and it's got to be precise to use a steel rule because it's going to be a, there's a lot of movement in a tape measure. But yeah, so it's that simple. So we've taken the calipers, we've gone from the edge to the centre of the hole and we've gone from the base here to the centre of the hole, measured it out. Here are all of my measurements and then uh, we'll go stick that on the CAD and get the laser machine to cut it out. Cool. Okay, cool, so this is what I've come up with in terms of the design. So this basically follows what we spoke about before. Um, what we've done here is, and this is how I arrange or figure out where my uh, screw holes are gonna go. So I know it's seven mil from this edge to this edge, and I know that this edge is gonna be 20 mil from here to here. So I'll just prove that there. Look. So what we'll do is we'll set it over to the end. So that's gonna work out 20 mil. That's going to work out seven mil. What we're going to do is set them, put these in, set this in, put it to this edge here, put it in line with this edge here, and then I'll put my M5 circle on there. That is effectively what I have done for all of the holes. Same here. Obviously, I think this one's 90, 95 up from the base, and this one works out at eight mil in from the right hand side. Same for down here and this center one. With the uh, riving knife slot that we put in there, like I said, so what we've done here is this box is five millimeters by 120 millimeters. We know that the center of the box is 27 and a half millimeters in from the outside, and we know that this box is 25 millimeters in from the back edge. So both of those meet here. Oh, it doesn't wanna work. So both of these lines meet, and then what I've done is I've aligned the center of this box, so the 120 by five mil box in here. And then what that will do is that will allow for the riving knife to come up along here without impacting the timber. So yeah, let's, uh, I'll send this over to the um, laser machine software and then show you how that works. Okay, cool. So this is how it comes into our laser machine software. This is RD Works that we use. Obviously, we've got our guidelines here in black and we have our cut lines in blue. So what I tend to do is obviously keep things in different colors so that when I come into the program, I can just right click on the uh, right click on the color, which highlights all of the um, guidelines. And then I can just hit delete and they're all gone. Yeah, and then we are good to send this through to the laser machine and uh, cut it and get cracking. Cool, let's go. 
Too far away from my hometown With my family I am bound I stick by them till I'm in the ground So what do you think to that then, right? I'm um, I'm super pleased with it. It's nice and uh, it's awesome when a little project like that comes together. Um, just got to remember the spacing on your holes is mega important. You, got, you want to work to the centers, not to the outsides. Um, I was really pleased with how the radiuses turn out on the corners because that's always a bit of a hard one. Uh, I know I use CAD and a laser machine, but you don't have to. You can um, you can just do that yourself. I used a scroll saw and a file I think the last time I did it so um yeah I did use a scroll saw and a file so so yeah so you don't need a laser saw a uh, laser machine and CAD it's just we've got it so I use it because you would so yeah let us know below what you think and um you'll have an awesome day alright you take it easy <laughs> <laughs>